so darknet uh, drug sales on the rise in england um again no surprise there considering um the rise in festival attendance and stuff like that it does, doesn't surprise me at all um it says here the following and um, the number of people in england buying drugs on the dark net has more than doubled since 2014 the global drug survey has found the annual survey question um, over 120,000 people from more than 30 countries um its data showed that the number of drug users in england buying products on the dark net has risen 12 percent to nearly 28 percent england also had the third highest number of illegal drugs delivered to order behind scotland and brazil okay cool brazil's drug um delivery thing is big it's interesting why that would be big right because uh, you see videos of people um openly selling cocaine and shit on the street right on the boardwalk of the beach and shit to tourists whatever um um you go to people say you go to favelas and you go buy gear do you know what I mean? for like 20 30 dollars a piece so i'm surprised that brazil's but i guess maybe if you're a rich person because it's quite segregated brazil right the rich people tend to live in their own little place with guarded by private security so i guess those kind of people wouldn't want to risk going down to a favela to go pick up <laughs> a joint or something right because you end up getting stripped of all your possessions so that might make sense but i'm surprised that one um and there were no specific figures about Wales or North Ireland, which I'm pretty sure is still going to have it. Because you know I mean, those places where kids are generally a bit bored, don't have much to do, they all long to come to London or to Manchester or to Liverpool, will probably end up doing some recreational drugs of choice or something. I'd imagine, right? Um, usually those kind of areas, alcohol abuse is really high too. But I don't know. Um, the study founder Adam Winstock says people do not understand the risk involved in buying drugs online. If you're given your name, somebody knows you bought little drugs online, and then there's possible that will they will blackmail you yeah that's true but i think the issue again this talking hypothetically for people that i know who have bought drugs online the problem isn't the fact that you're scared of your safety the you're kind you're kind of uh bargaining that you'd rather give away your personal address or an address of your workplace or address of a friend or a post office box or something so that you can confirm you can guarantee that your item you're getting is the item that you want right so if it's a real thing it's not something that's been cut or boshed or made in a warehouse somewhere it's the real product because um the benefit of a marketplace similar to now amazon is that most of the items sold on there are heavily reliant on user reviews right they kind of they kind of model their um, um websites basically like amazon right so there's a lot of reviewing on there um, the sellers really uh, take a real keen interest or making sure people leave reviews on their items to um, users leave reviews on things that they buy to let other people know if the service was good or it wasn't good and when it comes down to stealth when it comes down to overall delivery time product quality everything gets rated so it's within the seller's best interest to sell good things because again you can scam if you want to you could come in and sell some because there's been people i've heard who've done similar sort of thing who have come in and sold something good for two weeks or for a month and then suddenly start to sell Bosch after that, right? Because you can, there's a window, you could probably get away with doing that for about two months or a month or two months and a half. But after a while, the reviews will start catching up with you and people just suddenly um, um, back off and won't want to spend their money with you because they'd rather go somewhere else they can trust. So a lot of the rampant drug use online has to do with the fact that there isn't a reliable way to get it on the street, right? For the most part, which is how it should be because it's, it's an illegal substance. It's a class A substance. If you get caught selling it or buying it, you could get in big trouble and you could go to prison, right? So that makes sense. But the way that it comes into England, if you look at, if you read books like 000 by Roberto Saviano, which I might have somewhere around here. Do I have it here to show you? Uh, no. But I recommend you check it out. It's a book called 000 by Roberto Saviano. He's written quite. A, he's written another book called Gomorrah Two, which is based on, which is kind of set, which the TV series is based on, around kind of the Sicilian mafia. Um, but essentially, if you look at, if you read those kind of books and you find out about how the drug trade kind of flows into Europe, what you'll find out is that most of the stuff, especially if you're taking into consideration of cocaine, comes from Central to South America. It then comes through Africa. Um, it then comes um, through what was well, Central Africa. Um, oh, sorry, East Africa. Yeah, yeah. No, West Africa, Central Africa, up to North Africa, Morocco places, and then it heads, and then from there it heads into Europe, right? And the main port is usually in Italy or some places in, in Central Europe, and then from there it kind of gets split out and you know thrown into other parts of Europe, whether it be you know England, uh, Italy, France, Spain, or the other side, right? Um, and usually what ends up happening when it comes into the main ports of Europe, it starts to get cut from there. 
It doesn't get touched when it comes from Central America to Africa to Europe. It gets cut and it gets boshed down from Europe because there's not much of it that can get through. Because for it to get from Central America to Africa is pretty easy. There's there's not as much security as there would be from Africa to Europe. They're always looking for things. And port- there's, I think there's a beach recently, I think it off Morocco, where they washed up you know massive bricks and keys of cocaine that people found up um, that from a sh- from a ship that sank. Loads of that stuff happens all the time. So they tend to kind of get they t- tend to get away with it from Central America to Africa. So what ends up happening by the time it gets kids to Europe, it gets boshed, and by the time you get your product from some scabby kid in the pub somewhere in East London, you know it's been mixed with what however many other supplements, um, you know other things in there to kind of fluff it up or to make the, it more have more bang for their buck. By the time you get it, it's absolutely boshed to shit. It's poor quality. Your health is in question. All that sort of stuff. So if if you're talking about pure money value for money i'd assume you'd want the real item right um in terms of uh ease of use as well in terms of a uh, quality of service it might make sense to buy it online again it's very dangerous it's a illegal thing to do i wouldn't advise anyone to do it if you get caught you can get in big trouble but i understand the premise behind it and, I'm, and again thinking about the spike that comes from the festival attendances and people going to club nights and stuff no people not going to club nights people going to festivals instead of going to club nights it makes complete sense that this now is coming going up um but the article continues here a little bit briefly on um, the darknet is a network of untraceable online activity and, and hidden websites. In addition to the illegality and investigation by BBC podcast, the next episode found hundreds of people claiming to have been scammed or blackmailed by vendors. It happens all the time. It happens even in real life. Um, Leon says, I've got a very angry message saying I've got your address and threatening to either release it or show up there. It says something nasty. This was someone who was a crack and heroin dealer. Um, obviously, I, I don't have any consumer protection legally. Uh, duh, obviously. This kid, man, Leon, what a fucking fig. <laughs> uh, Caleb Daniels is a crypto market expert, and he said, what we're seeing is a perfect storm. More users are going to online whilst untested sites are popping up. Um, this leaves users vulnerable, of course, but most of the time, if you're if you're smart, like most sites, again, have you ever seen an online store that you don't recognize? You just type into Google and review, and automatically you see loads of people reviewing and saying, oh, "I don't buy from this place. They don't ship on time. They're poor." You, everyone does it. I, I don't. I've, I don't remember a time where I've willingly given my credit card details or number to anybody, let alone a darknet site, which which you should be taking even more precaution with, because by the most for on most accounts, you could just set up a darknet store within a process for half an hour if you read them. Um, if you read, uh, um, what's the one called? Ah, oh, what's the book that I've got from Silk Road? There's a book on Silk Road founder who's now in prison for like, you know, 30 years or plus, whatever. That kind of, stip- no, he kind of breaks down how quickly it got him to kind of set up the market. It's not hard to do. Maintaining is difficult. Being untraceable is difficult. Keeping your anonymity is difficult. But to set up a marketplace is not so hard to do. So if you to hand over your details willingly, you're probably, you know, you probably deserve to get scammed if you're doing it. At least do your research. Um, National Crime Agency spokesman said tracking, uh, tackling the cyber crime threat is a priority. We have lots of operational success and have led a number of investigations into criminal activity on the dark web, which has resulted in individuals being convicted. But yeah, this is just please speak in it. They would say that, wouldn't they? Um, Darknet expert Chris Montero said drug dealing on the darknet is not priority for the police. The police are limited to what they can do. It'll keep dealing with issues. Of course, it's not priority. There's bigger things they should be worrying about than people uh, scoring some uh, class A drugs on there. For the most part, again, it should. there's other things on there, such as child pornography, such as people selling weapons and all that kind of illegal stuff. And maybe people, um, what do you call it, cracking into banking institutes and all that sort of malarkey. Those are the things they should be worrying about more. I think the use of class A drugs online... Sh- should be it's unregulated as it is anyway because it's hard to manage but it should be left up to the adult to kind of choose they want to do that if you do do it that you know the risk involved but then if you do know the risk involved don't be surprised that if you're going to get scammed in it like that leon kid talking about how he's i don't have much criteria protection of course you don't you're buying stuff off darknet what do you expect to happen my friend um people are strange isn't it 